Welcome to Getting Started Guide for Unreal Engine 4. To start working with Unreal Engine 4, you're gonna need an Epic Launcher. To get that, you can go to the unrealengine.com and download it at the very top right corner of the screen. Once you have downloaded it, installed it and launched it, you, you will be able to log in through Facebook, Microsoft, Xbox, all kinds of accounts. Uh, they have a bunch of options for that. And then once you're logged in, you're going to be brought to this screen right here. And on the left side, you can go to the store to buy games. In the library, there are your games, your friends list. And what we are interested in is this Unreal Engine tab over here. By default, it's going to bring you to the first tab which contains a lot of news about Unreal Engine itself, uh, all the newer releases, all kinds of uh, Unreal Fests and all kinds of stuff. And I want to have a quick talk about Marketplace first for a few minutes. Uh, over here you can get a lot of quite interesting content. There is also a lot of free content available to you. So if you go to the free tab, you have the permanently free collection and free for a month. So every month Epic Games gives some money to the creators and the creators allow Epic to give away the assets for free. And once you add those to the cart, they're yours to keep forever. So it's actually a really good idea to come here every month and just simply add them to the cart and check out. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows because, well, some of these things are not exactly the best assets. I'm not saying they are bad, but uh, there are some things that maybe might not be used for game development because Unreal Engine is also used to create CGI for movies. And that requires to have very high quality assets. And for most games, maybe those super high quality assets are not the best idea because, well, they have a lot of vertices and if you want to have hundreds and thousands of these meshes on your screen, well, you and the users are going to need very, very beefy computers. So if I would go to my library, um, at the bottom you have the vault section, which is all of your assets that you have from the marketplace. And let me find this one specific one. So there is this thing called open world demo collection. It is super heavy. It's I believe some five or six gigabytes and all it contains is a few rocks, few trees, a, a little bit of grass. And for that small of an amount for assets, that's a really, really, really huge size. These assets are epic. They look amazing, but you probably don't want to use these in your open world games because otherwise, well, like I said, it, it's going to require a very, very beefy computer. So it's a good thing to think about what assets you really need what are you going to be using them for if you have like a small game which contains just one house with a couple of trees yeah these assets will fit your needs but if you want to have a huge dense forest well i don't think this is a, that good of an option for you while we are still in the vault section if you would hover over one of your information marks uh, over here you can see that mine says compatibility with unreal engine 4.17 and 4.16 that means that you can only add these assets to those specific versions of unreal engine Engine. But for the most part when you download these and if you have this specific version you can add it to that version and then you can migrate these assets to more newer versions. That will work perfectly with most of the meshes, might not work with all of the blueprint systems. So keep that in mind as well. Now let's go back to the top. So if we click on the library at the top, we can see we have our Unreal Engine versions. We can click on the plus sign to add any of the previous versions. As you can see, well, I have five versions as of right now. I have the new test build and at the top of the right corner, you can see that there is the Unreal Engine launch 4.253. So that is the newest full release that's going to be available to you always on that part of the screen. But all the other older versions are going to be available in the engine version. Then you have my project section, which contains all of the projects that you are creating inside of the Unreal Engine launcher. Also, you can download different projects and store them in separate folders. They might not all appear over here if they are in a separate folder, but you can still launch them through their executable file. So that's the most important part about launcher. Nothing else is really important. So let's launch the Unreal Engine. After a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on your PC, you will be brought to this screen right here. Uh, for different versions, this might look a little different, uh, but the basic idea is the same because it has changed a little bit over the years. Uh, so at the top, I have the all the projects that I have for this specific Unreal Engine version, so 2.25. So I can open up any of the current projects that I have right here, or we can create a new project. There are different, a lot of different templates we have for the games, for the movies, for architecture, automotive, production design, manufacturing, all kinds of stuff. But since I make content mostly for the games, uh, let's create a new games project. So select that, click on the next. And here we can now choose one of the pre-made templates. There are quite a few of them. We have the first person, we have the third person, rolling, puzzle, flying, top-down, vehicles, side-scrollers, 
all kinds of different templates select any of these i suggest actually to create all of these have a look at those see what they offer and think what would fit best for your game and obviously you can also select a blank project with nothing in it whatsoever i'm going to work with the third person first that's the one i enjoy the most click next and then you can select a bunch of different options whether you want to have a blueprints or c++ project uh, you can change this throughout the lifetime of your project inside of the project itself so don't worry about this too much you can select the quality settings you can select the ray tracing what kind of platform you want to create this project for with or without some starter content starter content basically basically comes with a bunch of materials so it's always a good idea to add that then you can select where you want to store your project and you can type in the name of the project i'm gonna call this getting started once we have that let's click on create project and let's create our project and again after a couple of seconds we will be brought to this screen right here so this is our actual game project so let's walk over some of the things that we can see right here on the screen on the left side we have the place actors tab which allows us to put some cubes some cylinders um, all kinds of lighting things as you can see we can input lights uh, spotlights all kinds of different things that are built into the engine by default then if we would go down we get we go to our content browser so the main folder would be the content so this is where you're gonna hold all of your assets that you are going to implement where you're gonna add blueprints uh, C++ code or whatever so you can go through these folders have a look what what's inside of those so we have the starter content like I mentioned with a bunch of materials some particle effects some few shapes in my case since I created a third person template I have the third person BP folder you might have the first person or flying or whatever this is the character the actual guy that's over here so the third person character so that's the main character of the game that we have right now then on the right side at the top we can see the world outliner which uh, shows all the objects that we have currently in our level so if we would select this cube uh, this cylinder that I just added you can see here is the cylinder and we can delete that by selecting it and pressing delete we can also select that in the game with the left mouse button as well in the viewport and delete this so in the middle this is the viewport this is your actual game now if we would select anything in our viewport then on the right side again in the details panel we can see some details about this specific thing so i've selected my cube so here you can see i have my cube this is the static mesh and we can select different materials for it materials are the visual side of it so the color of it basically we can select this drop down and select perhaps a different material so let's select some cobblestone and you can see it gave it a little bit different texture also we can simulate physics collisions change some lighting settings rendering all kinds of stuff we're going to talk about that a little bit later now let's speak about uh, the view for it a little bit now if you would click and hold your mouse left button and move the mouse around you can see we are flying if we go forward with the mouse we go forward backward we go backwards we look to the sides but that's not the best way to navigate across this project what i personally prefer is holding mouse right button while we are holding it in the viewport we can look around then we can use our keyboard a s d w keys to fly around similar like we do if you have ever played minecraft before also for another option would be using your keyboard keys up down uh, left right arrows keys so those are doing exactly the same thing and sometimes if we want to go up to an object and we are you can see it's hard for me to get right on the corner because it's it's moving really fast which you can do while still holding the uh, right mouse button you can scroll your mouse wheel if you scroll it forward you can see I'm gaining way more speed I'm way 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 faster and also you can scroll it backwards to go a little bit slower as you can see and that only works as long as you are holding the mouse right key down now let's talk about how to implement some assets I want to add a couple of static meshes so that I can make my level look a little bit better what I will do is right click in the content browser and at the top we can create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder assets let's open up this folder and I already have a couple of assets what I'm gonna use is an FBX I have a couple of models over here available to me so these are the models and what I will do is simply drag in the FBX file 
and by default well you can change quite a few options over here but by default i usually leave it like it is so i'm just going to click import and we have implemented our models and as you can see they are over here they might not always come with a material and texture like they did for me it depends on your folder structure and also the way that you exported the models from the modeling software but in my case well everything is working just fine but we're going to talk about materials how to create those and give them to the meshes in the following videos so let's drag in one of the objects so let's hold the left button and let's drag in a crate and as you can see here is the crate that i've added and if we would select that by default we have this tool over here that allows us to move this object around also we have a few more tools up here you can see we have the select translate object select and rotate select and scale we can select one of those as you can see or we can use keyboard keys w e r so if I click E, it's going to give me the rotation tool so we can rotate our mesh around and with R key, it's allowing us to scale our objects in different axes. And we can see all of those properties in the details panel. So over here, we have the location of the object, its rotation and its scaling. Now, if we would hold control down and drag from one of these, you can see all of them turned yellow. That means that they are all getting scaled in all axes and as you can see on the right side in the details panel the scaling is growing for all of these axes if we don't hold control we only scale in one of those axes there is another option where we can select two axes if you will go to the middle part right here you can see two of these turn yellow and now that means that these two axes are going to be the ones in which it's going to scale and the same thing works for the w so for the moving tool you can see over here we have these connections so that means we can move the object in two axes at once or we can select one of the axes and move it only in one of the axes. Now let's bring in some of these palettes. Let's create some fake ladders. So I will drag this out a little bit over here. Now if you would hold your left alt and move this object away, you can see it creates another instance. But after each object, you need to release the Alt key. Otherwise, while I'm still holding it, it's not, it's not duplicating anymore. It just duplicated once. So I can move it into its location, release Alt and click it again. And there we go. We only need to hold the Alt just for the first drag. That's it. We can now release the Alt because the ob object got already duplicated. And the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video is going to be how to actually test this out. What we can do is at the top we have this play button, but next to it we have this change play mode and play settings. Here you can change different ways how you want to play your game. If you would just simply select the selected viewport and press play, it's going to allow you to play your game in your viewport. But if you change this to any of these different ones, we can change, check this for the mobile preview. We can have a new editor window, standalone game or simulation. Then we will have different results. I prefer often to use the new editor window, but the best way would be to use the standalone game, but it takes a little bit longer to get launched. So now with the standalone window, we are in our game, so we can walk up these ladders and jump out of our game world. There is a thing called kill Z, so once we reach a certain amount, our actor is getting destroyed and the game is finished. So when you build your levels, you're gonna want to think about it so that the characters wouldn't be able to jump out of your game. That's going to be it for getting started with Unreal Engine 4 and in a very near future I'm going to be launching quite a few videos about very basic stuff about Unreal Engine, how to create some basic materials, uh, what are collisions, different types of collisions, physics, game modes, actors, functions, variables, basically everything you need to get started for creating your own first video game. So thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe and I see you in the next video.